This is rental car number 159, and today I'm taking you for a drive in the 2020 Chevy Corvette Stingray 3LT Z51. So we got the highest trim level, and we've got the $5,000 performance package. So this thing is a ton of fun to drive. No uh, full review, though, this time. That'll come out in about a week. But this is just so much fun to drive that I couldn't wait to share the driving experience with you right away. So uh, we're going to take a quick look at things like driving at low speeds. And I'll show you what it's like to park an $85,000 sports car. We'll do handling around 45 to 50 miles an hour through some nice curves. We'll look at cabin noise. Take it for a drive on the highway and give it up to about 90, 95. Take it out for a night drive. And then I'm also going to show you the cool feature on this vehicle where you can actually use the cameras on the car itself to record your own driving experience. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, all right, let's jump right in. All right, so let's talk about driving this thing at lower speeds. And I really just mean tooling around a parking lot. Some of these higher end vehicles are actually really hard to park, at least for someone like me that doesn't drive them very often. But I've found this to be extremely responsive. I mean, parking it, it is a breeze. And if you do need a little bit of assistance, it is nice that you have these um, front facing cameras to help you. Also, when if you need to reverse, the cameras are actually pretty nice as well. And I've had to really rely on these quite a bit. So I'm backing up right now into that parking space. Look at that. Normally I miss it by a mile, but uh, after just a little bit of practice driving this thing, I was able to get it pretty easily. And then you can do a, more of a fisheye view right here to make sure you're actually in that parking space. I gotta say, those guides are super helpful while you're driving around. And so is that front facing camera. Um, you know, visibility is just a little bit different in this vehicle than in others. So it's nice to have a little bit of help, especially if you're someone like me who's just running it for a little bit and isn't really comfortable driving it. So, you know, all in all low speeds, I feel pretty comfortable. Let's take it out on the street and go a little bit faster. So I'm maybe up to like 45. I'm gonna take you through some gentle curves and just sort of explain how I'm feeling while I'm driving. It is really evident though. I mean, we are so low, especially when you're behind another car, you just notice how low this thing rides. And it's kind of fun because it's so different from anything I've driven lately. Can you see what I mean by driving so low in the vehicle? I'm used to being much higher up. You can see like the, see the, the mufflers on the Explorer ahead of us. And I feel like we're so low that the other cars are way up higher ahead of us. It, uh, it makes it feel a little bit like a video game. Uh, maybe, maybe you drive cars like this all the time. I, I certainly don't. It just, it adds to the experience. I feel like I'm floating right above the road rather than riding up high above it and it just makes it a lot more fun to drive. I also feel like I'm in much more control. All right, so if you can see the HUD, we're going at about 30, 35 through these curves. Normally when I'm driving, I'd say like a lower end sedan, I can push it up to maybe 40 and feel comfortable. But beyond that, I don't feel like I have the control that I need to make sure I don't hit the curb. But uh, that is not true on this vehicle. The handling is just so tight that I'm pretty sure I could push it well over 50 through these curves and uh, be fine. Actually, let's do that right now. So we're at 52. Yeah, it's just a piece of cake. That is wonderful. Let's turn, uh, let's do a U-turn, see how, what the turning radius is like. All right, we didn't drift into the second lane at all, and we actually, what, we were over 10 miles an hour while we were doing that. Well, that's not too bad. So just cruising along at what I would consider like normal speeds, you know, 40, 45, uh, handling is really tight. I mean, if you look, I, I'm just manipulating the steering wheel just a little bit and you get an instant amount of turn. And that's not always true on these vehicles. Sometimes there is a little bit of a delay, but this is just so crisp that it makes uh, driving really fun. I'm actually finding myself accelerating both in and out of these curves, which is, uh, I mean, that's pretty dangerous, right? I'm just bound to get a speeding ticket if I drive this thing for too long. Let's do one more U-turn and then uh, let's play around with acceleration a little bit. Now, I'm in an office park, so I can't go crazy, but uh, we can 
see what kind of acceleration we have. First thing I want to test is accelerating while we're already moving. So we're at 30, and when I get to a straightaway, so I don't crash this thing, I'm going to slam on the accelerator, and let's see how instantly we get a burst of speed. What I would like to see is that an almost in instantaneous amount of just forward acceleration. So after this curve, we'll have a nice straightaway. All right, are you ready? One, two, three, go. Jeez, oh my goodness. That was nuts. So there is a delay. Uh, you know, I, I drove a Tesla recently. That accelerates, I mean, it's just a, the second you hit the pedal. There's a little bit of a delay, maybe half a second, but then you just hear that engine rev up, get really loud, and then you rock it forward. And um, that, that's just, it's so satisfying to feel the vehicle respond, both uh, physically and audibly at the same time. I don't know, I just love this car. Uh, let's go to a complete stop. Now you see there's a curve up there, so I'm not gonna be stupid crazy, but uh, let's accelerate pretty fast. Forty, so I didn't I didn't floor it because I mean it's an office park and there's other places for us to do that together I just wanted to give you kind of a taste for what it accelerates like do you do you feel that power? I mean, I certainly do driving this it pulls you forward and it's just so loud uh, That it's really really satisfying when you're accelerating. I mean just listen to that Jeez Man, that's nice um, Are we in sport mode? Let me look Tour. Yeah, we're in sport mode. Okay, that's probably why it sounds just so satisfying. All right, so um, we got to look at cabin noise. So let's do that while we go to the highway so that I can test things out at much, much higher speeds. And let's hope the uh, state police aren't out in force today. Otherwise, we're definitely going to get a speeding ticket today. But it'll be, uh, it'll be well worth it. Because, I mean, we've got to experience this thing in all of its glory. Right? I just I can't drive around the suburbs at 30 miles an hour and feel like I got my money's worth of this rental. So I'm gonna hang a right up here and uh, after traffic passes, I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and let's just focus on cabin noise for a moment. So I don't know about you, but I can I can hear some wind, which is not, not that bad. I don't I don't mind that at all. Can't hear much else. So there are cars going by, and I can't really hear them at all. So that that tells me the cabin noise is, is pretty good. Obviously, you can hear the engine, right? I mean, I want that. I don't want that to be muffled at all. Uh, let me turn on the radio a second. I'm gonna turn the volume up. Yeah, I mean, we're going 40, and uh, I could hear the guy on the radio pretty clearly. Definitely hear the music. I could hear both the bass and the drum and the flute that I think was playing. Uh, and that's at an extremely low volume. So that, that tells me that there is uh, no problem with cabin noise on this vehicle. But, I mean, let's take it out on the highway. Let's get it up to maybe like an 80 mile per hour range, and then we'll, we'll see what's going on with cabin noise. All right, so we're about to get on the interstate. I am going to go through this toll, and then uh, there's a car behind us. So what I want to do is pull over right here, let this guy get by. We're gonna have to get him pretty far. Um, and then I'll see if I can do a little accelerating. All right, we're at a dead stop. Are you ready? I'm pretty excited, here we go. right now. How are we supposed to go 100 with all these cars? So let's talk about handling at higher speeds. So I'm at about 60 right now. Um, I feel 
pretty in control. Let's see if we can get around this big truck right here. So it doesn't take a lot to change lanes, which is nice. And I feel like even at 75, uh, I'm completely in control. It's just a little bit of adjustment of the steering wheel. We can go within the lane. It takes a little bit more to get us out of the lane. So handling at higher speeds is, is actually really nice. I feel like I, I'm extremely in control and even at 75, I feel like I can go much, much faster. 80. It doesn't feel like the car is anywhere near its peak. In fact, I'm barely pushing down on the accelerator to maintain at 80 miles an hour. Now, my normal daily driver is a minivan, and I have to actually keep constant pressure on the accelerator to keep a speed like this. Uh, but with the Corvette, man, 80 feels like, feels like nothing. Let's see if we can get around this guy. Yeah, we're at 90, and uh, there, there's no question the car can go much, much faster. Although we got a lot of traffic today, so uh, I'm not going to be able to push it. But handling at this speed is just effortless. I mean, I feel like changing lanes at 80 miles an hour is, is nothing. The car feels extremely stable, and I, I, I feel like I'm in complete control. Also, even at 70, when, we, when I tap on the accelerator, I mean, it just pulls forward. It's like 70 miles an hour is nothing. We need to get it way, way higher before we're going to reach the... Uh, the upper limits of this vehicle. One thing I am noticing, and I'm, I'm sure you are too, is that, you know, at 70, 80 miles an hour, that cabin noise really does become much more apparent. I feel like I have to raise my voice to talk to you. Um, and I think that listening to anything over the entertainment features is probably going to be a little bit more challenging. But, I mean, I don't really care. I'm focused on the, the driving, uh, not so much on, on what's going on you know, entertainment-wise around the vehicle. I do think, though, that holding a conversation at that speed would be, I don't know, a little bit more challenging. So just, I mean, keep that in mind if you're thinking about driving this vehicle. So driving at night, I noticed a couple of things. First off, the engine is loud, and I mean in a really good way. When, when you have a little bit more quiet on the road, you just notice how much of a growl there is when you accelerate, and uh, man, it's fantastic. Maybe a little bit of a negative. You know, visibility is different on this vehicle. You sit so low and the, the roof comes down, it kind of infringes on your view a little bit. I don't know if you've noticed that the camera angle isn't ideal. Um, when you're on the highway, that's not a big deal because you can see so far out in front of you. But when you're driving around town, I don't know, it's kind of annoying. Sometimes you can't see the stoplight without having to lean forward and, and look up. But overall, man, this thing is I think it's worth the 85 grand, which is saying a lot from someone who's cheap like me. All right, so let's play around with the PDR uh, feature. So it's on the menu screen, right? Cycle over, hit this button, and then you can have the vehicle actually use the external cameras to record for you. Um, there's actually two uh, SD card slots on this vehicle. The first one is in the center armrest right here. You'll see it tucked away right here by all these USB ports. And that's actually for the nav, so that's not where you stick it. You have to open up, sorry about all my gear, the glove box, and then there's an SD card slot right here where you can put the SD card in, and that's where it will come up and show you that you're able to record. So on the screen itself, you have a, a lot of different features, right? We, we can go look at our recordings. There's none right now. And then there's a setting screen to set things up how you like it. So I'm going to have it so that it records audio. We're not going to do automatic recording. I don't want everything I do to be recorded, but I will turn it on when we're driving around. I put the video quality at the highest amount I can. And then what we're going to do is use a video overlay that's sport. So while we're driving, it'll show us the road and then miles per hour and then information about how I'm actually driving. There's a couple other settings that we could use. So uh, a video overlay could be track and then it just gives you a little bit more information. I don't like this though because it blocks out too much of what's going on. 
And then you can do lap timing also, but you know, I'm not doing laps. I'm just gonna drive and try and get this thing up to a decent speed. So how you'll do it is when the SD card is in, it'll tell you that that's it. And then you can hit start recording. And then uh, you'll be able to see not only me driving the vehicle, but kind of like a heads up display overlay over the video itself that shows you the performance. So uh, let's try it out now. everything I have right now on the Stingray. I, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll check out the full review because there is so much cool stuff on this vehicle that I want to share with you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Do I look ridiculous? I feel ridiculous when I wear this thing.